here's how I think we, we end this before we call it a night. I'm gonna go to the second floor by myself. Yes. But before I do that, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come up to the third floor with you and I'm gonna set you up for some, what we call sensory deprivation. You just kind of have to observe yourself where I sit you down with some noise canceling headphones and a blindfold and you basically just need to verbalize everything you're feeling, what's coming through your mind. Well, which room am I gonna go in? I think maybe 308. And if uh, you need anything, just scream and I'll hear you. That's really reassuring, <laughs> thank you. We got this. Absolutely, let's go. Sit here. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna turn this thing on. All right. You are gonna not be able to see anything because you're gonna have this on, and you're gonna have this on, yeah. and you're not gonna be able to hear anything. Ooh, my eyes. All right, so sometimes a spirit can communicate through you if you open yourself up. I'm gonna go down. If you start screaming, I'll hear you. Bye. Bye. I'm gonna do a bit of a sweep on the second floor. They've had a lot of reports of like apparitions. Apparently children like run into the walls. Earlier I was up here with Chip Coffee. He felt like there was a lot going on here. Let's see what happens. Sounded like I heard a footstep shuffle behind me. Ooh. Like, what, this is so weird, like I just get the chills coming down this hallway. It's been a minute since I've done a solo. I can hear my heartbeat. I don't like that. I'm glad it's beating, but it's weird. Ooh, this is creepy. Is there anyone up here with me? If anything's up here, can you knock like this? Ooh, getting the chills. Not because it's so cold. Oh, what was that? What was that? a knock. Are the mischievous children up here? Is there anyone here in the room with me? I can hear that machine going off, but I don't know what it means. Ooh, okay. Literally every hair on my body is standing on end right now. Oh, That's intense. What the is it with this place? I wonder how my mom's doing. She's awfully quiet. Were you here during Prohibition? Sharon, are you okay? Is everything okay? Guys, if you can hear me on Sharon's mic, she's in some kind of catatonic state. I'm gonna go check on my mom, make sure she's in one piece. 
Mom? How you doing? Hello. Mom? Hey. 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 Mom? Mom? Help me with the legs. Don't worry about the chair. Grab the legs. Grab the legs. I'm gonna lay her on the ground. Okay. Hey, can you see me? What's going on? Are you okay? Look at me. Look at me. We need an ambulance now. They're dispatching them all. I'm just trying to keep our airway open. Hi, we're at the Glen Tavern Inn. We have adult female, 70, unresponsive. Room 308. She has, yeah, room 308. She's breathing, her airway is clear. She's got a slow pulse, but she's breathing. Okay, we've got help on the way. Okay. Good morning. How's it going? So, that was weird, what happened. Oh, don't even, Jack. What do you remember about what happened in the room when we were doing the sensory deprivation? I was sat up on that bar stool and asked to put the headphones on. Yeah. That's the last thing I remember. I was out in the hallway, and our DP Addison was like, yeah, she's gone limp. And I was like, is she, like, with us right now? Like, I thought you were with us. No. <laughs> and I go in there, and you were completely non-responsive. You know, you went a little bit without breathing, and I had to give you a couple resuscitation breaths to get you going again. You took me to the local hospital. Mm -hmm. They ran every test imaginable. Test for stroke, heart. heart, seizure, seizure, aneurysm. Everything. What did it come back with? Nothing. Not a anything. Not anything. It just boggles my mind that, you know, you were unconscious for about 20 minutes, you weren't breathing for a couple minutes, and every medical test you had came back, you're totally fine. Yeah, I it know. It just doesn't make sense to me. I know. The whole thing, Jack, was just so weird. Well, we have uh, Rosanna and Aisha on the way over, so mm -hmm. we got to go get a bunch of footage all queued up and sorted for them to review, so. Okay. Come on in. It's so lovely to see you again. So happy you're OK and you're better. We were so worried about you, but I'm glad that you are doing well. Yeah, you're yeah. looking great. Thank that was so yeah. intense last time. That was time, quite an huh? exit. Definitely a first for me in all the investigations I've done. At first, it felt like a, a relatively unterrifying ghost hunt. Chip coffee with our psychic sweep was actually picking up on a lot of things that you guys had reported back to us. In 307, he said someone was murdered in this room and someone oh. had their head beaten in. Someone was killed in that room. And I know that's the room where there's the report of a headless woman. Yes. Exactly. He was picking up on like a really domineering, angry male presence. Yes. He's right. He's kind of like the head haunt. He said that person knew about the murder. Oh, wow. So he was just picking that up. And he said a couple things with my mom. He said, Sharon, you're the main event, and that she wasn't meant to be left alone. Oh, anyway. my God.